channel i'm rebecca and i recap live trials so you have something to listen to while you're creating those crafting masterpieces whether it's diamond painting crochet whatever it is watercolor those are what those are the things i do cross stitch uh, i got my desk well if you saw my desk but i've got my coffee <laughs> i got my coffee anyway day 18 of the chad daybell case um Chad is on trial for the murders of Tylee Ryan, 17 years old, J.J. Vallow, seven years old. Those are the two children of his current wife, Lori Vallow Daybell. And he's on trial for the murder of Tammy Daybell, his wife before he married, you know, after she, she died, you know, a couple weeks later, he's marrying Lori. Lori's already been tried for these murders and conspiracy to commit these murders and has been sentenced to multiple life sentences without the possibility of parole. She was facing the death penalty, but there was a technicality due to some discovery violations and the death penalty was taken off the table. But Chad is facing the death penalty. So if this verdict comes back guilty, there'll be another phase to this trial. So we're, we're not done seeing this, not by any means. Um, does that tell you that I don't think he's going to get off? <laughs> I think it does. He's also charged with the conspiracy to commit those murders and insurance fraud related to life insurance claims he made for his wife, Tammy. So day 18, we hear from Zulema Pastenis. Pastenis? Pastenis, I think, something like that. Anyway, she is one of the cults, one of the seven gatherers, as we're going to find out. And one of Chad's minions, Chad and Lori's minions. Um, I'm calling them minions. <laughs> so she met Chad in the summer of 2018. She met Lori in October of 2018 when they go to this conference with Melanie Gipp. They go to this conference over in St. George. That's when Lori meets Chad. Um, yeah. She said she met Alex in November of 2018. So she knew Alex an entire year. So this is the one that marries Alex. Yeah. But she knew him over, almost a year, over a year before they got married. They weren't dating until a short time before they got married, though. So at the St. George conference, she said Lori was being very flirtatious towards Chad. Now, Chad was trying to sell his books and she was being very helpful. But on the drive home, Lori gives everybody in the car because Zulema's in the car, Melody Gibbs in the car, and she's giving everybody an assignment. <laughs> uh, look up John, um, what, it, what it, oh God, what is it? James Valess. Apparently he was one of uh, Jesus's disciples. She didn't give anybody any context to why they were looking this up. And apparently James Les's significant other or wife or whatever it is in the Bible, her name was Elena. Now we know that Chad later on writes this story about James and Elena. And, you know, if I can find it, I'll link it up here. If you've never heard that story, you got to hear it. Okay. He wrote first two chapters of this story and was texting it to Lori. But yeah, you got to hear it. Anyway. So she said she was in attendance when um, she would go to these meetings at Lori's house. And Chad was uh, in attendance teaching translation. Uh, I'm not even, even going to try to explain that. Uh, in 2018, she had an opportunity because Chad had said he had something he wanted to tell her. So in 2018, Chad says, I've got something I need to tell you. So, but, you know, let's all go to lunch. So they go to lunch, Chad, Lori, Melanie Gibb tags along. And then while they're at lunch, he's like, I don't really want to tell you in front of Melanie. I'll call you later. He calls her later and tells, uh, he gives her a light rating of 4.7 um, and told her she was going through the translation process. So 
she had she referenced that Chad was calling himself ver various things. Of course, we've talked about he said he was James the Less. Uh, he said he was the Holy Ghost. And he said he was the brother of Jesus. Who knew Jesus had a brother? Okay. So she had this journal she would keep and she would write these diagrams of everything that he was telling her and she would take notes. And one of the things she noted was this light scale that he was teaching. And this has nothing to do with LDS. This is Chad. So uh, number one, if you are one on the light scale, that means, you know, you're number one, you're in the spirit world. Number, You're number two, and there are billions of those when you're born. So as soon as you're born, you're number two light. And then um, number three, there's billions of number threes. Then there's 4.1, which is, there's only 12,000 people that are 4.1 in, in the world, I guess. And there are only 7,000 people that are 4.2. And he, to, uh, he told her she was a 4.7, remember? There's only 700 people that are 4.3. And uh, there's only one person that is a 6.0. And Lori, she, she actually wrote this on the restaurant receipt during one of their luncheons, and she saved the receipt that had all this on there. Um, then her in her journal, she noted that Chad was telling her that there were these different councils. You know, there was Jesus. There was like this hierarchy. Jesus is up here. Then you've got... Um, there's a council of 12 people. And then underneath that, there's a council of 28. And then underneath that, there's a council of 48. And he was telling people that he and Lori were leaders of the council of 48. I don't think that originates at all from the Bible that I'm aware of. So she did acknowledge that she learned that people from Chad and Lori. Now, she did on cross-examination admit that the bulk of her information came from Lori through her, you know, to her understanding from Chad. But a lot of this, some of this did come directly from Chad. Um, she said people could move from light to dark. Um, at one point, uh, they found out that Charles Vallow, who was married to Lori at the time she met Chad, was possessed by a dark demon or spirit named Ned. So they were going to have this casting. Lori, Lori and Chad were going to teach them how to do this casting. This is in March of 2019. Now, you know, we, we know that Lori meets Chad in October 2018. January, February, she starts having issues with Charles. She leaves him or he, yeah, she leaves him. She leaves JJ with him for a time. He moves to Texas with JJ. She gets back together with him. According to Zilema, she got better. She went back to him in Texas for financial reasons. Anyway, at this meeting in March of 2019, the people that were going to do this casting were someone named Christina, someone named Nicole, Serena, Melanie Gibb, um, Lori, now, Lori was not present there. She was in Hawaii, but she was participating. And they would all hold hands, and then everyone had a part that they would say in this casting. Now, Chad wasn't present either. But when the casting was done, Lori gets on the phone, and she calls Chad, and she says, did it work? And he says, yes, it worked. <laughs> okay. He said it was successful that Ned had been cast out of Charles's body. Um, then later on, they find out that after Ned leaves the body, a guy named uh, a spirit, a guy, a spirit named Garrett enters Ch Charles's body. So now he's got another spirit in him. So they have a second casting and uh, it was the same people, but Alex is there now. Now, why wasn't Alex at the first casting? Because originally she was told that Alex was, uh, this was his first time. He was like a firstborn. He, he'd never, 
he hadn't been in prior lives or anything. So he was only a two on that light scale I told you about, where there's billions of twos. But then uh, Lori and Chad later on learned that he had been in past lives with them as Lori's warrior protector. And so that increased him on the light rating. So he could now participate in these castings. And this woman, this is my editorial, is buying this hook, line, and sinker. But so is Alex, because she said Alex bought into this 100%. He believed this. So they get together for this casting, the second casting. And Lori calls, you know, she gets on the phone with Chad. And he's like, yep, it worked. But. Unfortunately, a third spirit takes over Charles' body named Hiplos. Now, this spirit, he's like really dark. He's like the darkest of the dark spirits. And uh, since Ned and Garrett didn't work, you know, now Hiplos has taken over his body. Yeah. <laughs> now, she did admit that she's part of this group they formed. The women formed this group called the Seven Gatherers. And um, that consisted of Christina, Nicole, Serena, Melanie Gibb, Melanie Pawlowski, Zulema, and Lori, seven gathers. And um, <laughs> they started doing these castings as well after this. And they would also do teachings and they had an email where they communicate amongst themselves about biblical stuff. So they were all going to get together and they were going to go through these seven steps and cast out this Hiplos. Now, she was told that if the casting was successful, the body would die. Now, on cross-examination, the dumb prior kept saying that she had made a prior inconsistent statement during her interview with the police. She was asked if this wasn't successful, would the body be murdered? And she said, no, nobody ever talked about murder. Now he's telling the judge, this is a prior inconsistent statement, but it's not inconsistent. She said the body would die, not be murdered. That's two different things. So the judge would not let him show the prior inconsistent, what he believed was a prior inconsistent statement. Then um, she learned about Charles's death. She goes, because she's living in Arizona at this time. She goes over to Lori's home and she said, you know, she encounters Alex and that she, Alex gives his version of what happened, you know, that Charles came after him with a baseball bat and he had to shoot him. And she said, Lori was somber, but not sad. Then she talked about, we're getting to the portals. Chad had a portal in his house where he could uh, get information from the spirit world. And uh, he learned through this, you know, through the portal and the spirits that Tammy was going to die early. And um, that he could also communicate with Lori through this portal. So there was another meeting in August where she learned that um, JJ was going to die young. These are all predictions that uh, Lori and Chad are making. Um, but that JJ was going to come back to this earth as Colby's son, which is crazy because Colby is having a little boy. Yeah. I think his wife is currently pregnant with a son. That gives me the chills. Anyway, um, <laughs> this is this is a meeting in August of 2019. And she said, JJ and Tylee were there. Then at this meeting, she gets a blessing from Chad that says she was going to get married and, you know, soon. And that she needed to move to Rexburg. And um, then he also gave Alex a blessing at this meeting that he was going to get married early and he needed to move to Rexburg and that he was going to be a warrior. Okay. And they're like, why Rexburg? And he's like, this is a place of refuge. It's like the second headquarters of the, the church. So they go to Rexburg. Everybody packs up and goes to Rexburg. 
she doesn't go to Rexburg. Uh, she doesn't move to Rexburg until November of 2019 is after the children have already been murdered and Tammy has died. Um, but she goes to visit Rexburg in September of 2019. And it's, um, it's before Melanie goes, because we know Melanie was there the day that JJ disappeared. So it's before that she did see JJ. She's visiting Lori and Alex, but she's actually staying at Alex's apartment, which was in the same complex. But she said, where's Tylee? And um, Lori tells her she had to be freed. And she's like, what do you mean? And she's like, don't ask. They, uh, at some point she learns that Ty Tylee had been possessed by a demon named Hillary and that uh, JJ was being attacked by dark spirits, but uh, they couldn't get into his body and they were going into his support dog, his support animal. So we know that before they move, after Charles dies and they go to Rexburg, Lori gets rid of that dog. She returns that dog back to the place that trained him with or without the spirits. Don't know. Anyway. So later on, she's talking to Melanie Gibb and Melanie tells her that um, during her trip, this is, you now this is, she's there today. The last known sighting of JJ. She is there. She tells Zulema, that during her trip, she learned that JJ had been possessed. She never testified to that. Interesting, huh? But this is what Zulema said, Melanie said. And prior, the defense attorney does not object to hearsay when she's giving, Mel when she's telling the jury what Melanie told her, no hearsay objection. Well, I guess you wouldn't, it's not being offered for the truth because we know that this is all nonsense. So anyway, anyway. Um, so then she's asked about, it's Chad's computer and some things that she saw on Chad's computer and the defense lawyer says, well, how, how do you know what's on Chad's computer? She showed, he showed it to us at, at these meetings. Okay. So he had, he would show, he had all Lori's family's members listed, all his family members listed. The majority of Lori's family were dark and possessed and all of his kids were light. But um, Tammy was possessed and was a zombie, zombie. JJ and Tylee were dark possessed and were zombies. Um, then uh, in October, on October 9th, now don't, before I tell you what occurs on October 9th with Zulema, this is the same night that Tammy comes home at like nine o'clock-ish that night. She's been at a meeting of the women and they're She's come home with some stuff. She's getting the stuff out of her car. And this stranger walks up to her with what she believes is a paintball gun that misfires. And then he runs off, which we think is probably Alex. But that, you know, contemporaneously with this going on, there's a meeting going on at Melanie Pulowski's apartment in Rexburg and they were all participating in another casting. Yes. Of Tammy. They were trying to cast the zombie out of Tammy and they were told by Chad and Lori, we've got some new information on how to do this casting. This time we're going to use a cosmos. <laughs> I don't know what this means. Anyway, during this casting, Lori gets a phone call and she says, this is the angriest I have ever seen Lori. She was furious during this phone call, calling whoever was on the other end a moron, an idiot. Then she gets off the phone um, and 
by the way, who was present for this casting? She and Lori. It was just her and Lori trying to do this casting. And um, Lori gets off the phone and says, he's an idiot. He can't do anything by himself. Calling him stupid. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> then uh, she learned about Tammy's death through Melanie Gibb. Again, no objection to hearsay here, but Melanie Gibb calls her and says to her that the demon was casted out of Tammy and that Tammy's body died. I honestly think Melanie Gibb had more to do with this than we know. I don't, I may have failed to mention this, but Zulema Pastemis was given immunity in exchange for her testimony. I don't know if Melanie Gibb was. I suspect she was, but it's not something that we learned. Okay. So November, uh, October 31st, Halloween, she starts dating Alex. This is of 2019. After Tammy's death, she starts dating Alex. And on a, November 7th, she's at his apartment and they get engaged. And he gives her a diamond ring. Um, now, she was asked, where did you think JJ was during this time in October? Because this is when she's moving to Rexburg. Well, actually, she hadn't moved to Rexburg yet. Um, she's like, where's JJ? And um, she was told that he was he had been given decay to take care of. So then for Thanksgiving, Alex goes to her house in Arizona and he's, he's upset while he's there because Chad and Lori are not taking his phone calls. And he says, can you believe this? They are being such jerks after everything I did for them. Now they, they won't talk to me either. I'm either I'm, you know, a Christian or I'm not a Christian or, you know, whatever. So, on December 12th, Alex passes away. So the Saturday before this, that he, that he passed away, he had gone to Mexico for the day. She doesn't know why. Um, he came home that evening and he was sick. And on December 11th, the day before Alex dies, he gets a phone call from Chad and Lori saying uh, that they're exhuming Tammy's body. And he tells Zulema, I think they're making me the fall guy. Interesting. Interesting. So uh, crazy testimony yesterday. Crazy. So the saga continues. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. I will recap what happens on day 19 tomorrow. Also tomorrow, don't forget the sentencing of Adam Montgomery. I haven't decided if I'm going to do that live. I think I might. It's going to be a couple of hours. We'll see. <laughs> My plans for lives covering courts does, don't usually go as planned because they're always late and yeah, whatever. Anyway, we'll see. Have a great day, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow.